Thus far, I have revealed many of the profoundly encoded layers of the secret geometric design of Washington, D.C. In fact, I have revealed more secrets and answered more questions about the esoteric enigma that is our nation's capital than all of the previous researchers of this subject combined. You might ask yourself, how is it even possible that I am privy to such closely guarded secrets? The answer to that question may be quite difficult for some of you to believe, while it may be much easier for others. The answer is simply that I am the reincarnation of Pierre Charles Lenfant, the architectural designer of Washington, D.C., and I was reunited with my past memories during a near-death experience that occurred in October of 2000, as a result of complications due to asthma, although it would be many more years before I was able to make any sense of that experience. Sound crazy? Simply ask yourself, what are the odds that so many diverse and deeply profound layers of this secret code would be revealed to the world by a single person, let alone with the knowledge and skills to reproduce such a complex image to the precision that I have, and in full human scale no less, and all by using only a compass and straight edge? Who else on earth could do this, except Lenfant? Of course, to just come right out and say that I was Lenfant would instantly lead many of you to believe that I was a few cans short of a six-pack. Also, because this secret code contains sigil magic, if I were to come right out and say that the layout of Washington DC contains an occult spell, this would lead many to draw the same conclusion. Because of this, and because of the sheer gravity of the contents of the Vitruvian Code, it was important that I reveal these secrets in successive stages, so that you could first see that what I am saying about the layout is true, before immediately dismissing me as a crackpot, and because revealing all of this at once could be more than most people are able to bear. Understand that these revelations have been carefully and strategically laid out well in advance. In my film Secrets of the Vitruvian Code, the decoding of Washington, D.C., I made it a point to leave out all of the elements that might lead one to dismiss me as a nutcase, and I stuck to the cold hard facts of the code, the math, the geometry, the astrology, all so that you would see that my information was accurate. In my next film, The Esoteric Architecture of the White House, I introduced the microcosm to the macrocosm of Washington, D.C., with the White House revealing elements of the magic spell that has been placed over our nation's capital in order to blind people from the truth of what is really going on with our government. So now the time has come to reveal the fifth and final element of the Vitruvian Code, which will undeniably and irrefutably solidify all of my previous work on this subject. But first, let's review the elements of the Vitruvian Code that have already been revealed. We start with the Masonic Square and compasses that appear in the city's layout, just outside of the United States Capitol building. These are the keys to unlocking the entire code. If you ask a Freemason what the square and compasses symbolize, you will likely get the tired explanation that the square reminds them to keep their actions square with their fellow man, and the compasses remind them to circumscribe their lives with the principles of Freemasonry, or something to that effect. This is the exoteric, or bullshit, explanation designed for the masses, including the majority of their own fraternal members. The esoteric meaning, or what it really symbolizes, is the squaring of the circle, an impossible mathematical riddle that is as old as mathematics itself. Because of the mathematical impossibility of the completion of this task, the term squaring the circle has become synonymous with doing the impossible. While it is mathematically impossible to square the circle under the rules originally dictated by the ancients, close approximations of squaring the circle are possible since there are rational numbers that exist which are arbitrarily close to the value of pi, and a close approximation of squaring the circle is all that you need to obtain perfect geometric proportions, like those found in Leonardo da Vinci's iconic drawing, The Vitruvian Man, as well as in the proportions of the Great Pyramid. The set of Masonic compasses in Washington, D.C., made up by Pennsylvania and Maryland Avenues, can actually be used to scale a diagram of the Vitruvian Man in perfect harmonious proportion with a map of the city. This is done so by measuring the encompassed length of 12th Street, and using that measurement to scale one quarter, or cubit of the Vitruvian Man's height. Once in his proper proportion, the Vitruvian Man is placed on the map with the line above his head dissecting Logan and DuPont circles, and the drawing is centered on 16th Street, with the White House. In their proper scales, the proportions of Vitruvian Man perfectly harmonize with the layout of Washington, D.C., with virtually every single angled street in the city pointing directly to key locations of his anatomy. The circles and square that make up the inverted pentagram just north of the White House, perfectly align with the lines in Vitruvian Man's shoulders and elbows, placing the center of the pentagram directly on his forehead. 
His head, face, and chest are perfectly framed by the city's streets, with the angles of New York and Pennsylvania avenues perfectly mimicking the angles of his arms. He has ribs, a stomach, and even arteries in his legs. In fact, the Vitruvian man has his own chakra system, as represented by some of the most prominent structures and landmarks in Washington, D.C. A chakra system contains the seven major energy points of the subtle, non-physical body, which are arranged vertically along the axle channel. Each individual chakra is typically associated with a particular organ, or body function. In Washington, D.C., the Jefferson Memorial represents the root chakra, Muladhara, which is typically located at the base of the spine, and associated with the adrenal medulla, responsible for the fight-or-flight response when survival is under threat. Above that, the Washington Monument represents Svadhishthana. It should come as no surprise that this chakra is typically associated with the reproductive organs. Above the Washington Monument, is the Washington Ellipse, representing Manipura, the navel, or solar plexus chakra. Next, we have the White House representing Anahata, the heart chakra. The next chakra, Vishuddha, is conspicuously absent in Washington, D.C. because of its association with the throat and communication. This is done so in order to maintain discretion and secrecy. Above that, Scott Circle takes on the geometric form of the Star of David, representing Ajna, the third eye chakra, which is linked to the pineal gland. At the very top, is the location of the house of the temple, which represents Sahasrara, the crown chakra, typically associated with pure consciousness. The chakra system in Washington, D.C. serves to literally charge the city with the energies associated with each relative chakra. With the Vitruvian man in his proper scale on a map of Washington, D.C., a clear picture emerges, but a cohesive story begins to emerge with the addition of a scaled diagram of the Great Pyramid, using the same proportions as the square and circle from the Vitruvian man diagram. A cross-section view of the Great Pyramid is added to the mix, by positioning the top of the pyramid circle at the top of the Vitruvian man's head. This creates two sets of circles and squares of equal area that intersect each other, but are not directly on top of one another. With both scaled diagrams in place on the Washington, D.C. map, the Great Pyramid perfectly frames Vitruvian man's body, with the base of the pyramid in perfect alignment with the horizontal lines in Vitruvian man's knees, while the pyramid slopes perfectly coincide with the tops of the vertical lines in his shoulders and his temples, as well as placing the peak of the missing capstone at the top of his head. Here, we can see the secret pyramid structure of the United States government, with the U.S. Capitol building residing near the pyramid's entrance, and the House of the Temple symbolically residing above the White House, and missing capstone, as the all-seeing Eye of Providence, or its older incarnation, the Eye of Horus. But further analysis of this three-part diagram reveals even more astonishing alignments and insights, with the most amazing being that the Great Pyramid points directly to every wound suffered by Christ during the crucifixion. The pyramid's missing capstone perfectly frames the Vitruvian man's head, representing the crown of thorns worn by Christ, while the pyramid's vent shafts indicate four nail wounds, and the roof of the king's chamber coincides with the Theodore Roosevelt Memorial Bridge in Washington, D.C., pointing directly to the fatal spear wound that pierced his ribs. In fact, when combined, the three images even resemble Christ on, and ascending from the cross. But most notable, is that this also places the Queen's chamber squarely over the phallus of Vitruvian man, symbolizing sexual union, just as the Washington Monument resting in a vesica Pisces symbolizes in Washington, D.C. Here, we have a pyramid pointing to the wounds of Christ on the Vitruvian man, with an added emphasis on sexual union. In fact, the entire Vitruvian man himself, is perfectly framed within a vesica Pisces, as is a triangle, which if you have ever seen or read the Da Vinci Code, you will know that the triangle is also a symbol of the phallus. You might even say that the phallus has been circumcised. If you saw my first secrets of the Vitruvian Code film, you will already know that on the winter solstice, the three belled stars of Orion, which is a representation of the Egyptian god Osiris, align with the star Sirius, a representation of the Egyptian goddess Isis, pointing directly to where the sun, a representation of their offspring, the Egyptian sun god Horus, will emerge on the eastern horizon at dawn, descending from the two nail wounds of Vitruvian man's right hands, as represented by the stars Alnitak and Sirius, are two bloodlines that merge into one and travel down river, funneling into the bottomless pit of the subterranean chamber inside of the Great Pyramid.
This bloodline is represented by Interstate 66 merging with Ohio Drive near the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. In my previous films, I noted the mark of the beast that is located just beneath the Vitruvian man's lower left hand, but I alluded to the existence of a second bloodline, representing the bloodline of the Antichrist. In contrast to the opposing bloodline, this bloodline descends from the opposing stars, Kochub and Thuban, as represented by Interstate 395, which runs beneath the Capitol building grounds, and eventually funnels into the bottomless pit of the Great Pyramid, just as its counterpart does. Unlike its counterpart, these two bloodlines do not become one. The name Kochub literally means waiting him who cometh, while Thuban means the head of the serpent. Thuban was once the pole star but was replaced by Polaris due to the Earth's wobble known as the Procession of Equinox. In the book of Revelations, chapter 12, verses 7 through 9, we read, Now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back, but he was defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world, he was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him. This biblical text is a reference to a great battle in the heavens, the cosmos, where the serpent, or Thuban, was defeated by the archangel Michael, Polaris. In my film, The Esoteric Architecture of the White House, I began revealing some of the elements of a secret spell that has been encoded into the color-coded rooms of the White House. Here, you can see that the red room opposes the green room on the first floor of the White House, while the blue room opposes the yellow room between the first and second floors. These colors are crossed to blind you from what is really going on with the symbolism of Washington, D.C., and it is quite literally a spell to keep you from understanding what is really going on with our government. It is known as opponent process theory. It's a real science and you should look it up. But for right now, please allow me to summarize like this. Try to imagine reddish-green, not the dull brown you get when you mix the two pigments together, but rather, a color that is somewhat like red, and somewhat like green. Or, instead, try to imagine a yellowish-blue, not green, but a hue similar to both yellow and blue. Is your mind drawing a blank? That's because, even though those colors exist, you've probably never seen them. Red, green and yellow, blue are the so-called forbidden colors composed of pairs of hues whose light frequencies automatically cancel each other out in the human eye, they are supposed to be impossible to see simultaneously. The limitation results from the way we perceive color in the first place. Cells in the retina called opponent neurons fire when stimulated by incoming red light, and this flurry of activity tells the brain we're looking at something red. Those same opponent neurons are inhibited by green light, and the absence of activity tells the brain we're seeing green. Similarly, yellow light excites another set of opponent neurons, but blue light damps them. While most colors induce a mixture of effects in both sets of neurons, which our brains can decode to identify the component parts, red light exactly cancels the effect of green light, and yellow exactly cancels blue, so we can never perceive those colors coming from the same place. For a demonstration of opponent process theory at work, simply focus your eyes on only the white dot at the center of this image for a moment. The color-coded rooms in the White House are crossed to symbolically cancel one another out as the forbidden colors, thus rendering these rooms symbolically invisible, and allowing the events that are conspired within their walls to go unnoticed by the public, like say the secret design of the city, for example. While the first four components of the Vitruvian Code are all world-famous icons, the final component is relatively obscure. Shortly after the release of the esoteric architecture of the White House, I revealed on my Facebook page that the colored rooms are actually only a small part of a much bigger spell that encompasses the entire city. In fact, similar spells can be found in the symbolism that encodes various architectural structures and currencies all around the world. It is known as sigil magic. A sigil, from the Latin word sigillum, meaning seal, is a symbol used in magic. 
The term has usually referred to a type of pictorial signature of a demon or other entity. In modern usage, especially in the context of chaos magic, it refers to a symbolic representation of the magician's desired outcome. A magic circle is a circle or sphere of space marked out by practitioners of many branches of ritual magic, which they generally believe will contain energy and form a sacred space, or will provide them a form of magical protection, or both. It may be marked physically, drawn in salt or chalk, for example, or merely visualized. Its spiritual significance is similar to that of mandala and yantra in some Eastern religions. There are many published techniques for casting a circle, and many groups and individuals have their own unique methods. The common feature of these practices is that a boundary is traced around the working area. Some witchcraft traditions say that one must trace around the circle diesel three times. There is variation over which direction one should start in. Circles may or may not be physically marked out on the ground, and a variety of elaborate patterns for circle markings can be found in grimoires and magical manuals, often involving angelic and divine names. Such markings, or a simple unadorned circle, may be drawn in chalk or salt, or indicated by other means such as with a cord. The four cardinal directions are often prominently marked, such as with four candles. In ceremonial magic traditions the four directions are commonly related to the four archangels Michael, Gabriel, Raphael and Uriel, or Oriel, or the four classical elements, and also have four associated names of God. Other ceremonial traditions have candles between the quarters, that is in the northeast, northwest and so on. Often, an incantation will be recited stating the purpose and nature of the circle, often repeating an assortment of divine and angelic names. If there is any remaining doubt that the city contains a secret spell, just look at the city and compare it to these examples of sigil magic, or magic circles, as they are sometimes called. This particular example is quite interesting because I was already well acquainted with it, long before I ever received any revelations regarding the Vitruvian Code. It is known as the Sigillum Diaimeth, meaning the seal of God's truth, although it is sometimes referred to as simply Sigillum Di, meaning the seal of God. In 2003, I co-founded a band, and with the suggestion of one of my fellow co-founders, we chose to call the band Sigillum Di, and adopted this symbol as our own. That band is still in existence today, although I am no longer a member. The Sigillum Diaimoth is most widely known through the writings and artifacts of John Dee, a 16th century occultist and astrologer in the court of Elizabeth I. While the sigil does appear in older texts of which Dee was probably familiar, he was not happy with them and ultimately gained guidance from angels to construct his version. The sigillum Dee is composed of two circles, a pentagram, and three heptagons, and is labeled with the name of God and his angels. It was an amulet with the magical function that, according to one of the oldest sources, Liber Iuritus, allowed the initiated magician to have power over all creatures except archangels but is usually only reserved for those who can achieve the blessed vision of God and angels. Behold, the fifth element of the Vitruvian Code, the Sigillum Dei Meath. The Sigillum Dei was included in this spell as a symbolic representation of the desired outcome of the Novus Ordo Seclorum, or the New Order of the Ages, and to give Washington D.C. power over all of humanity. The desired outcome of this spell is to control the hearts and minds of mankind with false religious doctrines, and to distort the truth that rests within the allegories contained within the Holy Bible. The desired outcome also includes severing the functions of the pineal gland of the human brain, thus rendering this organ ineffective, and damping your perception of the spiritual realms, while keeping the secrets of pure consciousness that result from the activation of the crown chakra all for themselves. The missing capstone of the Great Pyramid literally represents the crown chakra, or pure consciousness, as does the Eye of Horus, or the all-seeing Eye of Providence. The capstone of the Great Pyramid is missing because it symbolizes our connection to God, which has been severed by the elites for thousands of years. 
Also included in this spell is the desired outcome to mark the hand of every man, woman, and child with the number of the beast, thus establishing a one-world economic and political system, and ushering in the kingdom of the Antichrist. This is the secret destiny of America, as spoken of by renowned Masonic author and philosopher, Manly P. Hall. Many people have asked me why I am willing to risk my own life to reveal these secrets, and many other people have asked why I waste my efforts divulging this knowledge unto the inet. The reason I do what I do is because in my previous life as Lenfant, I am guilty of serving a great injustice to all of humanity by creating this spell at the request of my superiors, and for my own purpose of monetary gain. Incidentally, I was never paid in full for my architectural services in designing the city, and when they offered to pay me an insulting sum that was significantly lower than the original price that was agreed upon, I refused to accept the funds. As Lenfant, I realized what a great injustice I had served to humanity, and it still continues to weigh heavily upon my soul in my current incarnation. It has even manifested into my physical being at an early age. With the development of asthma, I would have revealed my wrongdoings in my previous life. But as a man of honor, I was sworn to a blood oath to take these secrets to the grave. But I have fulfilled that oath and it is now null and void. Before I left that incarnation, I took the appropriate steps to ensure that when I returned to the flesh, my soul would remember, so that I could correct my wrongdoings, while retaining the integrity of my blood oath. This is the true glory of God, through my own sins, I cursed myself to return to the hell that I created, with my own intentions and my own two hands, to correct the mistakes that I have made, and it is through the disease that I have manifested within myself because of my sins, that I have found my redemption, my fellow man, I am truly sorry for my sins against you, myself, and the one true God who is everything. I release you from the spell of Washington DC, and may all the spells that are attached to this grid soon fall with it like dominoes. May the glory of the one true God shine upon us all. The thing is, I am not the sole contributor to the creation of this hell we call Earth, which was once a paradise. The truth is, whether you refuse to acknowledge it or not, you too, have contributed to this creation in a very big way, and you continue to do so with each day of each incarnation. Make sure that your creation is to the true glory of God. You can help by spreading this message. The more that people become aware of this spell, the more this spell will lose its effect, and the sooner we can reclaim the kingdom of heaven on earth. The greatest deception of the Antichrist was to lead you into believing that the Antichrist was an actual person who would one day arrive on the scene to wreak havoc. The truth is, the Antichrist is not a person, but the union between the church and state, led by the 13 families of the elite, and the kingdom of Satan has already long been established here on earth ever since the Great Pyramid's capstone went missing. As you open your eyes to reclaim your crown chakra, you will know that the true glory of God is, and always has been, within your own temple. A riddle and stone in front of your eyes, hiding the truth, deception and lies. Look at it closer and you will believe. Change your perception of what you perceive. They're fooling the masses about the design of a powerful city with powers divine. Ever so sacred its geometry, loaded with symbols from mythology. The square and the compass the keys to it all. Unlock their true secrets and shrouds will soon fall. Squaring the circle it's hard to digest. Just look at the master, Da Vinci knew best. Vitruvian man, proportions derived, encoded in concrete, his secrets disguised. Great is the structure, the heart of the land. More ancient than Egypt, it rests on its sand. 
These are the templates for which you will need to master this knowledge, a code you will read. To the wounds of Christ the pyramid points, on the Vetruvian man the one who anoints. Sexual union can also be found, a vesica Pisces on monumental ground. The bloodline of Christ encrypted in stone for 200 years, so let it be known. And as you awaken to open your eyes, don't be mistaken by all of their lies. The kingdom of Satan is already here. It's long been established for hundreds of years. But God is the structure of all that you see, the nature of nature for eternity. His power is greater, his nature divine, the one true creator within your own mind. So take up your crown upon your head. Open your eyes, awaken the dead. Sigillum diem if the circle complete, the seal of God's truth destroys the elite. The wicked will cower when these words are spoken. Knowledge is power. The spell is now broken.